When the beat drops, you know exactly what time it is. Hello and welcome to The Blitz. I am David Shealy, rocking solo as Evan is taking some much-deserved time off. However, there are no breaks when it comes to these Bucks. Today we're talking about the league leaders on this team, how Baker Mayfield has earned himself some money, and if Todd Bowles actually is the right head coach for this team. Let's get this party started with the 10 in 10. These are the top 10 stories you need to know as we get ready for kickoff from Ray J. It's the Bucks and the Saints at 1 o'clock. Tampa Bay is on a four-game winning streak and above 500 for the first time since mid-October. The Saints have lost four of their last six. As a result, that makes today what we like to call a hat and t-shirt game. If Tampa Bay wins, they are NFC South champions for the third straight season, something they've never done in franchise history. And it's fitting that the division crown is on the line in this rivalry game. Both of these teams have been the kings of the NFC South in recent history. Because if you look at the last six NFC South champions, it's either been the Saints or the Buccaneers. Having to go through New Orleans to earn a playoff spot is basically a regular occurrence at this point. We know it's a big game. Um, big game for, just for a couple of reasons. Yeah, we, we can clinch. Um, it's, it's the next one. It's the Saints. Um, Whatever, whatever it may be, whatever you want to want to make it. Can't worry about what they were trying to get to. We're trying to win a division. We're trying to win a ball game. They're in our way. We're in their way. So we're coming trying to win the game. There was once a time when the Bucks just could not beat New Orleans in the regular season. That is no longer the case. At number nine, Tampa Bay took care of business in the Superdome back in week four, defeating the Saints 26 to nine. The offense totaled more than 350 yards, while the defense forced three turnovers. The Bucks have won the last three meetings against their rivals from the Big Easy. That includes last year's matchup inside Ray J on Monday Night Football. The Bucks came back from a 16-3 deficit when Tom Brady connected with Rashad White with three seconds left. It was one of four fourth quarter comebacks by the GOAT in his final season. His retirement two months later opened the door for Baker Mayfield, who comes in at number eight. He is starting to look like the quarterback people thought he would be when he first entered the NFL. Coming out of week 16, Mayfield was one of three quarterbacks with at least 25 touchdown passes and eight or fewer interceptions. He's thrown nine tuds and just one INT during this winning streak. He's posted a passer rating of 110.6. That's the fourth best in the league over the past four weeks. And let's remember, the Bucks are getting this type of production on a discount. They signed Baker to a one-year $4 million deal in March. That deal included up to $4.5 million in incentives. He's on pace to collect about 60% of that. So Tampa Bay will end up paying less than $7 million for a starting quarterback that's been healthy all season long and is this close to taking them to the playoffs. Both sides are interested in an extension. It's safe to say it's going to cost a little bit more money to keep them in town. So I hope Jason Light is prepared to cut the check for his quarterback and his top wide receiver. At number seven, Mike Evans is having one of the best seasons of his career, knowing it might be his last as a buck. After scoring twice last week, Evans leads the NFL with 13 touchdown catches. That is one shy of his personal best. If he can find the end zone two more times, he will set a new franchise record for TD receptions in a single season. Evans made sure to thank his defense for the scores last week because both touchdowns came against Jacksonville off of interceptions. At number six, let's talk about how this unit continues to take it away. They have forced a turnover in five consecutive games. That includes four against Jacksonville. Their goal is 30 total takeaways. They have 24 so far. The Bucks are also tops in the league in turnover differential. Now turning to our difference maker at number five, James Yarko. He's back with our Locked On Bucks burning question of the week. James, things are going swimmingly in Tampa Bay right now. As the recent, has the recent winning streak, I should ask, cooled down the hot seat for Todd Bowles. And if he's going to keep his job, is that a good thing for the Bucks long term? Well, what a difference a month can make, right? If you had asked me this question at the beginning of November, mid-November, right around Thanksgiving, I'd have said that Todd Bowles is probably on his way out of Tampa. Instead, the Bucks are riding a four-game win streak and need one win in the next two weeks to clinch the division. So I would say, yeah, at this stage, Todd Bowles has done enough to save his job and, and to remain the head coach in Tampa Bay. And this really benefits the Buccaneers long term when you take a look at the situation with Dave Canales being a first year offensive coordinator, a first time play caller. And then, of course, at the quarterback position with Baker Mayfield, I think it's more than likely that the Bucs and Baker Mayfield are going to try to work something out and bring him back next season. So now you can see the growth of 
Dave Canales and Baker Mayfield together in this offense with the rest of the pieces around him. And I think there's a lot to be said about the growth that we've seen with these two over the course of the last month as they continue to get more comfortable with one another, as Dave Canales continues to get more comfortable as a play caller. So the retaining Todd Bowles is really what is going to retain Dave Canales. The continuity and the familiarity of Todd Bowles and that coaching staff staying in Tampa with a lot of the same pieces is really going to help the Buccaneers long term. And this four game win streak, you know, maybe five, depending on how the Saints game goes, really has a lot to do with it. Thank you, James. Speaking of someone trying to keep his job in Tampa Bay, Devin White certainly made a case for that last Sunday. At number four, number 45 played arguably his best game of the season a week ago. He grabbed the second interception of the season. He also posted two passes defensed and a half sack. He was Pro Football Focus's highest graded linebacker from week 16. Now when you zoom out and look at the entire year, he's grading poorly. And that's what the Bucks have to consider as White's rookie deal expires at the end of this season. At number three, let's talk about a young man in his rookie year. Yaya Diaby is becoming a star. He's playing with confidence now that he's more comfortable with the scheme and the stats support that. He leads the Bucks and all rookies in the NFL in sacks with six and a half. He's also second among rookies in tackles for loss. The man in first is his teammate, Kalijah Kansi. The future of this Bucks defense is looking bright. Yaya and other young players should get plenty of playing time today. The Bucks will be without a few veterans against New Orleans. This is our sideline segment coming in at number two. Co Keeft, Carlton Davis, and Shaq Barrett are all out today. Each of those men got hurt in last Sunday's game. You see Mike Green and Rakeem Jarrett there as well. They are simply working their way back from injured reserve. Finally, at number one, it is one of our favorite segments. Before taking off, Evan Klosky spoke with offensive lineman Aaron Stinney in this week's edition of The One Buck. All right, I'm with Aaron Stinney, and, and first, Aaron, I just got to ask you how much fun you're having this year, the fact that you were able to come back from that, that gruesome injury one year ago and, and to find yourself in the starting lineup and, and doing a lot of productive things for this offense. You know, just having, trying to go out there, do as much as I can, have as much fun as I can. It's, you know, it's a blast, man. You know, getting hurt last year, missing the whole year, um, being able to come back, you know, it's a huge reward. You know, you think back to the dark days of it, the dog days of it, you know, it's a, it was a long road to be able to, you know, get into that and be able to do that now, you know, it's kind of like, you know, a dream come true thing because, you know, it's something that you work so hard for during a very rough time where, you know, you, you don't really know what it's going to look like as you're going through it. So just to be able to get to it, you know, leg holding up well, keeping it all under control, it's, it's a blast. Yeah, we love seeing that. We also love seeing how you arrive to the stadium. Everyone's got their own fashion, the way they do things. You seem to lean into jerseys. Just how did that start for you and, and how many jerseys do you have? Uh, I mean, I have, you know, I haven't counted in a while, but <laughs> I was, I haven't, haven't reworn one yet. That's, yeah, that's why, I, that's yeah. why I try to, I try to, try to wear a new one each time. I got the idea from uh, Donnie Smith when he was here, mainly do basketball. Um, you know, I do new, new school guys that's coming out that's supposed to be huge, uh, old school guys that, you know, are huge names and stuff. And then just any, any player that, you know, is a favorite of mine or I like their game, stuff like that. Cause you know, I was a big basketball guy growing up. What has been the biggest thing for your group to find that connectivity? You know, I think it's just, I think it's just as time goes, you know, guys just gelling together, just trying to get all the little nitpicky details. So that way, you know, everything can just hit at full cylinders as you're going. Thank you, Evan and Aaron. Taking a look at our 10 Tampa Bay schedule, there is just one game airing today, and it's not the one Dolphins fans in this area are looking forward to. It's the Bengals and the Chiefs at 425. Due to NFL restrictions, 10 Tampa Bay cannot air the Dolphins and Ravens game because it kicks off at the same time as today's Bucks game. The only way to watch the Miami game in this market is with NFL Sunday ticket. I will say this three times Dr. Umar style. This is the NFL's decision, not ours. This is the NFL's decision, not ours. This is the NFL's decision, not ours. Taking a look at our Blitz Picks records, Evan is still a game ahead of me. We picked the Bucks last week and knew by halftime that we were correct. And guess what? 
We're both taking Tampa Bay today. The Saints are having all kinds of issues, and that's typically a trap for a hot team like the Bucs, but even Saints fans have told me this week that they aren't even feeling their own team right now, so I have to take their word for it. I've got 28 to 12. Evan has 27 to 23. Either way, we expect to see hats and T-shirts after today's contest. If you're coming to the game, don't be afraid to say what's up. Until then, Happy New Year. We will see you at Ray J. Peace out, everybody. More Bright Side coming up.